Hey folks, less than two years ago I got this new thermal imaging camera with which I was satisfied. It's mostly made in China, but the actual image sensor itself was outsourced to Seek USA. As you might know, the US have pretty strict export regulations on thermal imaging technology, if it is capable of capturing more than 9 FPS. So as a lowly consumer, chances of getting an affordable, unbureaucratic, higher FPS thermal imager used to be pretty slim. Up until recently, where Infiray, a Chinese semiconductor company, figured out how to make good, affordable microbolometer sensors themselves. They are not crippled by USA's ITAR regulations and claim to have a few advantages other than just FPS for consumer-grade pricing. So they've been crazy successful lately in the electronic engineering bubble. And the only reason why I don't have their P2 Pro yet is that I'm usually using my phone to film visible light videos. I don't want to occupy my phone with a thermal imaging app. So I've been hoping to get my hands on an autonomous FLIR style camera with Infiray technology at its core. And what do you know, here is such a candidate. Branded, distributed and provided to me for free for the purposes of this video by Vivor. Let's give it a try, shall we? At the time I'm recording this video, the box in front of me with the SC240M costs roughly 340 euro. This M model is equipped with an optional 2 megapixel visible light camera and is delivered with a 64 gig microSD card. Personally, I think I could live without the visible light camera and the augmented reality overlay kind of view that that allows. If you agree, the SC240N model might be a better fit for you. Especially because that model costs only roughly 250 euro at the moment. Not much more than the aforementioned smartphone dongle. All depending on your geographic location, of course. Decent pricing though, with all of these entry-level cameras having roughly the same infrared specifications. We do have a bit of an annoying boot time, which the smartphone dongle doesn't. I assume they are booting Linux on here on an all-winner SOC or something like that. To take care of the real-time visible image and infrared merging. Probably encoding and compressing of recorded video. Ugh, reject modernity, embrace 8-bit microcontrollers. Yeah, okay, if you're in the middle of a repair and catch the first whiff of magic smoke, the patient might not be too happy to wait another 33 seconds for the thermal imager to boot. But okay, the thing specifies a 9 hour battery runtime, so one could just keep it on standby during repairs. The body feels great mechanically. It's about twice as heavy as my previous camera, which isn't an advantage in its own right. But one can tell that that weight has been invested in thick rubber bumpers and good quality plastic. That must also be the reason for their 2 meter drop height claim. There is still a mechanical moving calibration shutter in front of the sensor. So I wouldn't call this product immune to shock, but it certainly feels reassuring and as well protected as it can be. Even though Vivo's spatial resolution 43.2 kilopixel is much lower than that of my previous camera 76.8 kilopixel, it somehow manages to look a lot better and convey at least as much info. I think that's due to a combination of low noise from the sensor and a more brain compatible utilization of the color palette. We can't differentiate all that well between different shades of white. So it just doesn't go all the way there even at the hottest point, it's still yellowish. Also the higher frame rate makes Vivo's output much more brain digestible somehow. So personally I wouldn't mind trading in some datasheet pixel resolution for clearer more detailed images. Straight out of the box, Vivo's SC240M is unfortunately not very well suited for microelectronic troubleshooting. Neither was the red camera, which is why I made it that macro lens dust cover. By default, they are both adjusted for what feels like a roughly 10cm minimal focal length. See, even a coarse through hole assembly gets nice and blurry if I get too close. In this regard, the Infiray P2 Pro smartphone dongle is actually much better, because it is delivered by default with a clip on macro lens. This product might be more catering towards larger electrical, automotive or HVAC stuff. With the usual CO2 laser lens trick one can of course modify the focal length and achieve great SMT visibility that way. But there isn't really a good place here to attach a 3D printed holder for such a lens. So not really a pleasing solution. The display brightness is sufficient for daytime outdoor use. Just make sure not to have a large white reflective forehead. The IR sensitivity is fantastic and almost dual use suspicious, 
Here we are effortlessly picking up a wind turbine, 700 meters away, and here's Flocke, 3 meters away. Tactical use at nighttime is similarly prevented by a large white reflective forehead. Even at the lowest display brightness setting, it'll totally light up your whole face. But yeah, image quality in terms of sharpness, noise and contrast really is amazing for such a low-cost camera. I wouldn't mind a kind of permanent augmented reality void star visor with an infrared sensor to reveal some previously invisible secrets of the world. Such as this hedgehog, which much to its dismay has also been revealed by Dexter in this case. But the slightly warm spot on the ground where the slightly warm hedgehog just hung out a moment ago. Or the slightly warm car that has probably driven within the last hour. That is some interesting stuff. When taking pictures with the normal trigger, SC240M saves a normal JPEG, showing exactly the display contents, so the IR view in the selected color palette for example. And additionally a larger IRG file, which is I think a kind of raw infrared image format, with a number associated to each pixel and maybe some additional infrared metadata. There is apparently some kind of Windows only infiray software to read those, and a Python converter on GitHub. The video files recorded by this camera have an H.264 file extension, but are in some unusual container that cannot be opened by my video editing software directly. A transcoder software called Handbrake manages it under lots of complaining. When connected via USB, the camera unfortunately only enumerates as an SD card reader. Had it also made basically a UVC webcam available, like a certain smartphone accessory does, that would have been amazing for integration into professional thermography software packages. But no, just an SD card reader. I would summarize the Vivor SC240M as follows. It's a robust and decently priced package for an entry-level infrared sensor. It delivers superior frame rates and at least comparable image quality, compared to a camera built around a much much more expensive American sensor. It's suitable for day-to-day -day construction, HVAC, automotive or electrical work. Had they added a focal length adjustment and brought out the direct USB camera interface, it would have been perfect. As it is, for microelectronics, I'm going to have to choose something else. My initial impression of the outer body being rugged was entirely correct. This was one tough nut to crack, let me tell you. The only obvious screws hold down a small cover over the USB port and the SD card slot. All seams of the plastic shells are disguised and protected by a thick rubber layer. Nothing to poke into and pry open, no screw holes hidden under the stickers. I was already thinking about getting it x-rayed or to turn green and start smashing. But then I finally discovered the sneakiest screw hole covers ever. Unfortunately that discovery alone wasn't good enough. I also had to peel away the display cover, revealing yet more screws. Oh hello, that's where the 9 hour battery runtime is coming from. Ooh, matte solder mask, gold-plated PCB, fancy stuff. And would you look at that die-cast aluminium frame. All screws are loctited, how on earth is this a $300 product? Ui, that is so much more than just an aluminium frame. That seems to be a heatsink for the image sensors. Dude, this is exquisitely made. Am I seeing coil craft inductors? That central high silicon 3516 is a specialized ARM Cortex A9 SoC with lots of camera interfaces and video and graphic processing hardware on board. It seems to be intended mainly for surveillance camera applications because its datasheet mentions motion detection, face detection, and a boundary guard function.
Oh wow, there is another tiny die cast aluminium part just for pressing the two sensors against their heatsink. I could imagine that this product is subsidized somehow, or at least priced with very low margins, to boost the popularity of a relatively young Vivo brand. If this beautiful rugged product was made in the West, it would cost at least an order of magnitude more. Yeah, I'll let this speak for itself. It's a beauty. In here we could also adjust the fixed focal length of the thermal imaging package itself. To make it more microelectronics friendly, but meh. An external lens would be much more flexible. Ah, C200 sensor, eh? Infiray C200 is an interesting thing to ask Google about. Just in case these Vivor cameras are ever out of stock. Yeah, that's about as far as I'm going to go with this. I'm thoroughly impressed with this internal construction. Thank you for watching.